Just setting up a practice run to set the width of the wind to my goal of around 19 millimeters and to hit my turns per layer at about 114 or so. So it looks like we're going to be around 50 minutes or so. Let's kick things off and uh, see how the wine goes. As you guys can see on the left side facing right here, the bobbin itself is more of a conical shape. So I can't get the winding all the way over to the edge. So there's a little bit of overlap in this area. Thus, the calculations that I made as well uh, were just a little inaccurate, above 20% on a sample run that I did. So I've made some modifications to the uh, spreadsheet just based on empirical data. We'll see how this works out. We'll let this thing just continue to uh, wind. And for those that are new, you don't need a winder to do this. You could do it manually or use a drill. I'm just trying to make the winding as accurate as possible across the uh, width that I have to work with. Again, if I had a perfectly round bobbin, I would be able to probably achieve some uh, pretty close numbers to my calculations, but again, being that this is out of round, um, hopefully I'll be within uh, plus or minus 10%. You guys may be able to see this, but I'm starting to climb the hill where I mentioned I've got more of a uh, conical shape on this left side of the uh, bobbin. So we're getting closer to um, a 100% feel across the bobbin area. But again, as I mentioned in the uh, beginning, there's a lot of uh, overlap of the turns uh, just due to the uh, shape of the particular bobbin. My new target will be 7,083 turns. And I'll kind of eyeball things and just see how close I am to the outer edge of the form factor to make sure that I still have a, a window. I'm approaching my target now of 7083, but uh, I might be able to go just a little beyond that point. I was looking at my bobbin feel, and I'm just kind of eyeballing things actually, just to uh, make sure that I leave enough room for that uh, humbucking coil wind in the uh, lead dress, so I may push again beyond my initial target. You can see I'm still looking pretty good on my clearance. One side of the uh, bobbin, that right side, is uh, a little larger in diameter than this left side. I'll use it as my uh, gauge and kind of eyeball things and see how much further I can push this beyond my initial uh, cutoff point. You can see we're approaching my uh, 7083 number. I'm going to go ahead and go past that point. You guys can see I'm still past my uh, original faults or design. And I've just been looking at my uh, window. I'm just about at my uh, cutoff point. I don't want to push it much further. All right, I'm going to go just a little past this point. But, uh, you know, more turns is good. 
more DC resistance and uh, more importantly the inductance will increase as well. So we'll have a nice uh, choke. I think I'm going to go ahead and push this thing to 8700 turns. I may end up having to uh, unwind a bit if I can't uh, fit everything inside the uh, bobbin, that is the lead dress and the humbucking coil. So there we have it. I think I'll go ahead and be brave and um, tie things off at this point. Skin the wire back and do some DC resistance checks and um, see what we've got. I'm going to just put a piece of tape up here for now. Let's get the meter hooked up, see what we've got. Hopefully I'm between 11 and 1200 ohms, or at least north of 1000. Go back to my lead here, my start lead that I used that nickel strip on. And then I've got the uh, magnet wire prepared here. Perfect. 1200 ohms and the inductance uh, should be probably 15 to 20 percent higher than the initial fuel coil based on the uh, calculations I've done. Let me uh, get started on the lead dress and then we can also get the uh, humbucking coil back in place. You guys saw where I used the uh, real thin nickel strip for my most uh, inner winding or my start winding. Again, I brought it up the side. And I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, crimp this down and solder my uh, new lead dress at this location and then we'll fold it over after putting some transformer tape down over this area as well. And let that cool and I'll flip it over and do the uh, back side as well. And then one more small piece over the top of this for now and then I'll wrap additional layers. Just finished rewinding the humbucking coil. Again, that wraps around the uh, outside of the fill coil in this design. And I think I've got the direction correct. If not, we'll just have to uh, reverse the leads. But uh, time will tell when we get to that point. Still got a ways to go. Okay, guys, the plan to use the existing surround didn't work out. I was doubtful it would. You guys saw in the uh, previous videos that followed along, it was pretty much uh, degraded. So um, I happened to have a little 5-inch um, comb, and I was able to take the uh, center piece that attached back to the spider itself and uh, cut it about... Uh, 8 to 10 millimeters back and place a new comb in place. So I was able to uh, lift the existing gasket and I've just got the glue drying. I need to get the output transformer cleaned up but uh, we can test the speaker uh, coming up very soon. Just using a string of some 9 volt batteries that are pretty much wore out to energize the fuel coil just for a quick test. I'll continue to uh, clean up this output transformer and do all the lead dress and also uh, do some double checking for my uh, humbucking coil orientation. Of course, if you get that wrong, we can just reverse the connections, no big deal. 
I'll let this uh, glue in the center continue to uh, set up and then I'll probably apply a second coat as well. Hey guys, as you can see, I'm finishing up the lead dress for the uh, fill coil and the output transformer. One thing I wanted to share, you can see I already have the uh, length of wire uh, correct and I've put a little solder on it and when I insert it in the pin, it comes to the top. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of solder uh, down in the pin with the uh, conductor. And then we'll heat this up and I think we'll be good to go. I've uh, used this numerous times now. It seems to work pretty well. And I'll go back and apply additional solder to the top. And we should be good to go now. Let's do a real quick check of the reflected primary impedance back to the output tube and this receiver being a Type 41. We can just use the uh, peak and get a real general idea. We'll go into adductor mode and then go over to uh, max phase and you can see we're about 7,600 ohms. And if you look at the uh, tube manual that I'm sharing online here in the side-by-side -side or picture-in-picture, -picture, you'll see it's a good match. Again, that being a four ohm loudspeaker, then the turns ratio would be correct for the output transformer. Let's look at the uh, fill coil one more time. We'll look at DC resistance in addition to the uh, inductance to see how effective it will serve as a choke. Okay, you can see we're showing about uh, 3.6 Henry's. I need a fresh battery in the LCR meter. Let's pull out the uh, fluke. And just look at DC resistance one more time. So 1247. And again, my end goal will be about 1800 ohms. So an additional resistor will be added in series. You can see I've got the fill coil energized using my DC power supply, about 30 uh, milliamps of DC current. And I'm going to just throw my uh, signal generator on it, my audio signal generator. I appreciate you guys watching the video on the fill coil rewind and uh, getting this little loudspeaker back together. The real test will be when we get the receiver working. I can focus on that now since I've got a hand-built oscillator coil that uh, may or may not work and then the loudspeaker performance is uh, yet to be determined as well. Thanks again for following along. Everyone take care and stay well.